So I'm going to try to tackle this topic with an appropriate amount of grace and nuance. Your opinions and analysis don't align with my personal experiences and therefore they hold no value. Mm, tomato tomato sucks I'm throwing and tomatoes. tomatoes is weird. Fuck you, tomatoes. This was a mistake. <laughs> Okay, so I have become rather infamous for this series depending on who you ask about it because some people think I go too hard, others think I don't go hard enough. If you're new here, How the Internet Fell Out of Love is an ongoing video project of mine that takes a look at the career of a popular celebrity and the anatomy of how a fanbase can fall out of favor with them over time. It's not always necessarily the story of a universal cancellation the way some may think, so keep that in mind when we talk about the subject of today's video, Taika Waititi, whose narrative in recent months has been a little little more complex than that. Before we get started, feel free to follow me on Twitter, and if you want to support more of the projects on this channel, sign up for my Patreon where you can get weekly exclusive content that I don't post here. Thanks! Taika Waititi is a New Zealand filmmaker, actor, and comedian. He has probably made something that you have watched, perhaps a piece of media that you even like. For example, I am a fan of Thor Ragnarok and Our Flag Means Death. More so season 1 than season 2, but that's a different tangent for a different day. But if you're unfamiliar, let me give you a brief recap of his career so far. Taika got his first real big break back in 2013, directing and starring in the vampire comedy and mockumentary What We Do in the Shadows. The film was well received enough to land a scripted television series which went on to receive an Emmy nomination. From there, he became involved in the biggest pop culture franchise of the late 2010s, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This was an interesting choice because Taika's wheelhouse is comedy, and up until this point, it was understood that while Marvel movies could definitely have comedic elements, Thor was still a pretty grounded, self-serious character, especially in Thor 2, which is a movie that no one likes. And so Taika ended up directing Thor Ragnarok, which is more or less a comedy all the way through, and according to Taika, his approach to the film was encouraging lots of jokes and improvisation. It's also worth noting that he voiced Korg, and everyone likes Korg. Hey man. I'm Korg, this is me. We're gonna jump on that spaceship and get out of here. Wanna come? For this cast and these characters, and for the time that this came out in 2017, the whole thing really worked. The levity was much needed for a character like Thor, and I believe that the film's success was pretty pivotal for the Marvel Cinematic Universe for better or worse. A good example is that I think after seeing the potential that Chris Hemsworth had as a comedic actor, they sort of took his character in that direction permanently, especially in Endgame, and I think they went a little too overboard with it, and that's a common criticism I've seen for Thor's character as time has progressed, but Ragnarok was a commercial hit and that really established Taika as a more prominent director in the world of like corporate big budget popcorn movies. Around this time, Taika also started working on a film called Jojo Rabbit which came out in 2019. I'm just going to get my opinion out of the way here because I know this movie and any discussion around it makes people mad. I like Jojo Rabbit. I don't personally understand the take that it's offensive when that's kind of the point, but also I am not Jewish, so if you are Jewish and you have a different opinion, that's totally valid. All that being said, Jojo Rabbit is a film about a child in the Hitler Youth whose mother is secretly hiding a Jewish girl in their home. Taika, who is Jewish himself, plays the boy's imaginary friend, imaginary Adolf Hitler. It sounds weird, if it doesn't make sense to you when you hear that, go watch the movie, come back later, it'll make a little more sense. Again, I don't feel like it's worth explaining the controversy that came with the release of this movie because in my opinion, it's not really part of the greater narrative of Waititi's arc in the public eye. A lot of criticism here is just like a personal preference when it comes to seeing these themes portrayed in the movie in this particular way, which to me is understandable, but it's nothing to make a big stink about. Jojo Rabbit managed to pull some legit award nominations, receiving nods for Best Picture and Best Adapted Screenplay, making Taika the first indigenous person to ever be nominated for the latter. So at this point, it seemed like Taika was a diverse enough writer and performer to operate in all genres, from low-key offbeat comedies to superhero blockbusters to films with enough heart and technical skill to win Academy recognition. There's no doubt that Taika is very talented, right? He's very good at what he does. In terms of the scope of this series and the celebrities that I've covered so far, he falls into the same category uh, in my opinion, as like a Lin-Manuel Miranda, somebody who is undeniably very good at what they do, and the majority of the criticism that has been placed on them over the course of their career is, is majorly fixated on their art rather than their personal actions. Uh, in the case of Taika Waititi, that has changed a little bit, uh, especially in, in recent months, and we'll get there. Uh, but it's not lost on me that, like, you know, I've profiled a lot of these celebrities, and a lot of them happen to be entertainers of color that are very successful in 
their fields. And I feel like, uh, as I've been kind of exploring this series, it seems like there's a lot of pressure uh, on these entertainers in particular to make art that is always smart and consistent and representative of the communities that they represent. And there's always a lot of pressure on them for to, to succeed in that way, uh, in a way that is not really expected of their white counterparts. Uh, and that's a point that I just kind of wanted to bring up and make you know, my audience aware of as we get into more of like the fall of Taika Waititi and why people are critical of his, his later works and, and that kind of thing. I think Taika is a good example of a celebrity who became so likable over the years that some corners of the internet just started to massively root against his success. I think this is also something that just tends to happen more often with entertainers from marginalized groups, which I've discussed a little bit already, but you know, Taika had people preying on his downfall for one reason or another. Maybe they thought his humor was cringe, or maybe they didn't like Jojo Rabbit. Maybe it was because he cultivated a fan base that could be perceived as obnoxious because a lot of them are young queer women. Whatever the case is. Point is, in these precarious situations, all it takes is one slip up, a bad performance, one singular bad output, and for Taika it all started with a screaming goat. As is tradition, the protectors of our world are bestowed with great peace. Okay, so why did everybody hate Thor Love and Thunder if it's more or less the same premise and the same vibe from the same director as the previous Thor movie that everyone loved? Well, the answer to that is that it was entirely too silly the entire time that screaming goat joke happens like 500 times. Uh, they got Christian Bale to play a villain uh, called the God Butcher, which sounds hard as fuck, uh, but they didn't really do anything with it. Uh, it was it was just a, a misstep uh, and a series of, of, of missteps for Marvel that have become more common. Additionally, most actors, directors, and creatives who are currently associated with Marvel have to frequently go on defense for what I'm going to call the Marvel machine, for lack of a better term, in which Disney studio executives crank out movies and television shows at a fast pace, and because of the nature and content of those properties, it often puts a lot of pressure on VFX artists uh, who were underpaid and overworked and there was an interview where Taika didn't necessarily defend this but tried to make light of a situation uh, in, in a way that, that came off rather tone deaf because VFX workers are notoriously exploited in the entertainment industry so uh, I'm gonna play that clip now. It's unmistakable. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say that? Oh, I never noticed it. I was I, never looking at you. Trust me, I did. It's, it's, it's it kind of funny. And it's great. It's, it's, it it's doesn't make any sense, but I love it. It's unmistakable. <laughs> what do we need? That performance used to make sense because he would wake up, he'd go, Bleh! and then that was my reaction. But now I just do it for no reason, which is cool. And that's also an indication of how sometimes someone can make a performance look crazy when it wasn't. Taika strikes me as a person who tends to turn everything into a joke whether or not the situation calls for it, and so sometimes that results in him being a little tone deaf to situations like the plight of VFX workers. And you know, sometimes this happens, it's, it's you know, it's not always intentional, it's, it's... Uh, oh, fuck. After making a string of disparaging comments about a beauty pageant. He wrote, no disrespect to men who want to be slash dress as women. I should have just said their makeup looks manly. Another tweet saw him write, my trans friends can walk in heels. But you're right, actual katoi are better looking. Katoi is a Thai term with a complex history of meanings related to transgender people particularly women. Now I wouldn't normally bring this up in this type of video because I'm generally of the opinion that how you feel about offensive tweets tweeted however long ago by a person who may or may not have done a respectable amount of learning and growing since then is entirely a subjective thing in my view. But at the same time, Taika Waititi over this span of his career has sort of been branded by various fan bases as an LGBTQ icon. He has played gay characters, he has written LGBTQ stories, and so for some LGBTQ fans to see this kind of rhetoric 
on the social media pages of a person who they looked up to regardless of how long ago it was tweeted. I understand why that can be a little disheartening, but there's another reason why I bring it up as well. As of recording this video, Taika has a new film coming out later this month called Next Goal Wins. I haven't seen it yet, apparently some folks who went to a series of mystery AMC screenings have seen it already and have some pretty mixed opinions on it, but it's a film about a football team from American Samoa that is notoriously very bad at football. The movie apparently has a controversial scene featuring a non-binary actor who is playing a transgender athlete. From what I understand, the actor has been praised for doing a good job with the material she was given, but apparently there is a scene that has been interpreted by some as transphobic, in which another character dead names her to motivate her during football practice, and then there's a weird conversation about her genitals. But I haven't seen the movie yet, so I can't necessarily comment about how this was handled. However, many have argued that Taika has a responsibility to be more thoughtful with stories surrounding these topics. And on top of that, initial reviews suggest that the film is not very good, transphobia aside. I mean, if I'm Taika trying to beat the falling off allegations and I see this devastating tweet from Lights Camera Jackson, it's not looking great for me, folks. Hashtag next goal wins gets a red card and a disqualification. Annoyingly unfunny from the first to the 90th minute. No genuine charm. All over the place. Robotic performance from Michael Fassbender, who sings to see his chandelier in the car. Film is set in 2011. Song debuted in 2014. So the criticism over Next Goal Wins so far has been kind of a direct counterpoint to the argument I've seen regarding uh, Taika Waititi that he is at his best when he has full creative control over a project. Uh, and that might be true, and maybe that explains why there was such a lackluster reception to Thor Love and Thunder, uh, but it appears that, you know, this is a smaller picture, it's a Searchlight production, uh, and there's still a couple of criticisms about Taika's work. Do I personally think that two bad movies in a row is the equivalent of falling off, so to speak? I think for a lot of the internet, yeah, especially if you're built up to kind of be the next big thing, people are kind of waiting around the corner to tear you down. But on the other hand, do I think he can make a comeback with some kind of either independent project or maybe even another superhero film? Of course I do, it's Hollywood. But I think the more interesting part of Taika's story in, in terms of the public eye for me and not necessarily his work is the fact that he represents a lot for a lot of different marginalized communities. He is indigenous, he, you know, closely identifies with the LGBTQ community, and he puts a lot of those influences into his projects, and I feel like a lot of the times his fan bases, whether this is intentional or not, feel let down by his behavior, by his work, and I don't know if it's because the standard is so high or if it's because it's not high enough. And jumping off of that, I do want to briefly mention the most, most recent controversy that Taika has found himself in, similarly to a lot of celebrities due to the state of the world right now. I'm not going to get too deep into it, but a lot of famous people signed this letter right here. I'm not going to give any commentary on it one way or the other, but this is the letter that they signed. It has been interpreted by many pro-Palestinian activists as a letter in solidarity with Israel. And so Taika in particular has come under fire because he is a person of indigenous descent and has been accused of being on the wrong side of a cause. I have a video discussing celebrity attitudes toward world events. If you want to go take a look at that, I go more in depth on this type of thing there, but I did want to include it because it is what a lot of people are talking about. Now that Next Goal Wins is coming out, like it is definitely part of the conversation and I would feel weird not including it. There are also allegations floating around that there was an actor who was kicked off of season two of Our Flag Means Death after being present in season one, allegedly for his pro Palestinian views. This is an excerpt of the statement that the actor put out regarding the issue. I will link the full thing down below if you want to look for yourself. The reason for his departure has not officially been confirmed by anyone on the show or at HBO, but I did want to just put this out there for context. I think the reaction to this video, as is normally the case with the How the Internet Fell Out of Love series, is going to be rather mixed. Because Taika Waititi has made a lot of cool stuff for a lot of marginalized people who don't normally get to see themselves represented in traditional media. And so sometimes famous people in that kind of position don't behave the way we think they should, and that becomes all the more devastating to folks who looked up to them. But ultimately, that is subjective, and it is that way nine times out of ten when we look at the history of a public figure or celebrity. How much any of this information changes your opinion on 
Taika Waititi is determined by what kind of person you are and what you hold dear and what you value. And that's not the same for everyone. My job here is just to show up in your sub box and provide some context anytime I see multiple tweets about a random celebrity falling off into theoretical obscurity. I can be summoned in that way, like Beetlejuice. Thank you so much as always for watching you guys. Let me know in the comments down below who you think should be the next celebrity for How the Internet Fell Out of Love. It is a series that I try to do every single month, so look out for these videos in your sub box. They're always an interesting time. Remember to touch some grass, eat your vegetables, and I'll see you next time.